So we're looking at what's my purpose in life, um, trying to kind of apply some of the things that we looked at with the finding God's uh, will. So there was a six-part check that we looked at. What does the Bible say? Are you developing a heart for God? Have you sought wise counsel? Is God's providence apparent? Does it make sense? Has God intervened? Um, that's the six-part uh, thing that we, that we looked at. And you're going to find that most situations that you deal with in life where you have to make a really big decision will be resolved within the first three of these. Um, a good example, um, someone I knew uh, thought they should co-sign for a loan. What does the Bible say? The Bible says not to co-sign for, for a loan. Are you developing heart for God? This certain situation, it was kind of something where they had a little bit of conflicting ideas on it. They just weren't real sure. And so step number three, have you sought wise counsel? They, um, the people who had said something warned against it. But it was just one of those situations that seemed like a really good opportunity, and so they didn't want to miss the opportunity, so they did it anyways. It ended up blowing up in their faces. So you see what I'm saying? The first three will usually set you in the right area, um, and especially if you keep them in the right order too. Um, so here's a personal example that I um, – that I, I hate it when it does that, the, <laughs> this thing right here. I don't know why it does that. I hate it so much. Anyways, um, so this is just a personal example for my own life that I think might, might help you. Um, should I have adopted? Um, so three of my children are uh, blood-related. Two of them are, are – are, you know what I'm saying. From Gracie. Two of them are not from Gracie. <laughs> There's another mother. And another father. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so then the question becomes, well, should I, ha should I have adopted them? Should I, have, should I have taken them in? Well, the Bible says to take care of, care of orphans, so there's, there's a go there. Next is developing a heart and all that. So as I seek after God, uh, I'm moved with compassion for them. I have a heart for, for orphans. Uh, not, that, not to say that, you know, we shouldn't all do a part to help orphans in some way or another. I mean, not everybody should necessarily take kids in. There's some people who are just not really kid people, but um, that doesn't mean that you can't help. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of organizations out there. Um, one that I just came, just learned about is called Backyard Orphans. Uh, if you know anybody who's trying to adopt or anything like that, they can really help you get the ball rolling. Anyways, um, and so if, for me, it was kind of like something that I really wanted to do. I really had a heart to do it. Um, I was able to. I had the room to do it in my house. I had the, the financial means to do it. Um, and then it just so happened that I fell in the next line, in the line of kinsmen, you know, um, the, the, close, the, the closest related person who could. It, it fell to me. Um, so there's that. Um, and then obviously something could be said about the Old Testament law when it talks about kinsmen and redeemers and that kind of stuff. But... I guess it's a conversation for another day. So then the next one, uh, the council was divided. Uh, some people I asked seemed to think that it was a good idea. Some people seemed to think that it was not a good idea. And that sometimes happens. Um, but me and my spouse both agreed. See what I mean? There has to be some kind of... That's one of the things I really didn't agree with John Bevere on that video that we were watching. He just kind of said something and his wife just had to kind of go along with it. Your spouse is one of the biggest helps in making a big decision. When you treat your spouse like they're, they have to just follow your leading on everything rather than taking the opportunity to, to learn from them, you, you shoot yourself in the foot. Some people are, are so concerned with trying to be independent and improve themselves and all that. They, they miss the benefit of the spouse. I mean, why even be married if you're going to overlook the benefit that it is to be married? Some people want to be married, they think, but then they want to live like they're single, and I just... It's just one of those things. So uh, there was that. So then the next thing, it worked out. When talking about God's providence, everything just perfectly worked out. We didn't have a car. Somebody bought us a car that would fit them. I mean, see what I mean? Like it, it, things just worked out. Um, and then after the fact, you know, we clearly see God's blessing us uh, through the process and, and, you know, providing for us and leading us and everything. Um, and so far, he's made it where they're still there. So I'm guessing that, you know, he hasn't intervened to say, you know, get out of there. And then the last one, or I guess, which is actually two, the last two, does it make sense? Yeah, it made sense. There were kids who needed a home. We had the ability, so we did. And so then that takes us to the very last one. Did God intervene in the situation? Well, he didn't really intervene uh, in, in the way like this. Do not take these children or... Do take these children. But he did intervene, like I said before, with, with just providing things miraculously when we needed them. Um, another good example, um, we were having some problems with the state um, here recently. They weren't really wanting us to go out of state. 
And so they were kind of giving us a hard time, and we didn't know if we were going to actually be able to take them with us. And so we were like, well, if they say no, what are we going to do? And we were just like, I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, the, the place is booked and, for, and, you know, where we're going. And, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, well, what, what are we going to do? Um, I really didn't think they were going to just from the way that they were talking. Um, and then I, I, one of the days I just said, Lord, please help us get an answer today. And that very same day, which is like super miraculous for, for this for these people, um, they get back with us and said, yeah, you can go, you're approved. And it was like one of those things where we were at the point where we had to make start making decisions about what to do. Um, and so, you know, so there's that kind of stuff of divine intervention, but nothing in the sense of if God tells you to do something, you need to do that thing. You know what I mean? Not everybody's going to have that encounter, but if God does give you that encounter, you need to pay attention to it. Um, so whenever you are making, I don't know why it does that. My own personal hell is this is this PowerPoint. Uh, anyways, so when you're looking at what's your purpose, um, don't get so caught up in the idea of a predestined path. That's going to be your biggest um, uh, preventer of actually doing things. You're going to be so concerned that you're going to miss something that you won't do anything at all. You'll be moved to inaction. It's just a terrible place to be in. Don't be concerned about some, some preordained perfect path. If God wants you to do something, he will specifically tell you like he did with Gideon. Otherwise, follow the Bible, follow as God leads you, follow as, as counsel guides you, and you'll figure things out. I mean, it's like I tell people all the time. I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> I've just made choices of what I thought God wanted me to do at the time, and I'm trying to be obedient to him and his word, and this is where I am. Like, <laughs> I... I I don't, I don't know if I, I really don't feel like I'm called to be a pastor, and yet here I am. So it's like, well, <laughs> if the situation changes, then okay. So number one, the first thing before anything else, live your life to glorify God. Don't try to be in rebellion to him. Don't try and, and you know, do what he told you not to do. Um, and then that takes us to the idea of Paul, which I think really dismantles a lot of the ideas we have. Did Paul have a purpose or did he live his life with purpose? And if we look at it, we see that he lived his life with purpose. There were really just a few, a handful of times that God really intervened. Like, for instance, the first and most obvious one, he's killing off the Christians. <laughs> and Jesus is like, hold up, <laughs> that's not what we're going to do here. And uh, then he's just going around to different areas, doing different ministry after years and years. This is like 15, 20 years that he's been saved, and he just starts going around. And then God's like, okay, I see that you're going to go there. Don't go there. Go over here instead. Other than that, those are there's just a handful of times that God specifically intervened to you know, redirect him to a different way. And so that, that should kind of be, be seen. Like when, when, when Paul hit certain obstacles that you know changed his plans, it, it was one of those things where Paul wasn't overly upset about it. Like, he gets uh, on the ship, and it shipwrecks, and he's not, like, bent out of shape, like, oh, my plans are ruined. He's just like, okay, well, what are we doing now? You know what I mean? Like, it, it wasn't a thing about he was out there looking for that big thing. He was doing things to try to tell people about Jesus, to try and, you know, work good character in him and others, trying and encouraging people. And so he lived with purpose rather than trying to find a purpose, you know, like he's off on some treasure hunt. Uh, even anything you do in life, even a boring job, can be meaningful if you have motivation behind the actions. Some people will tell you something like this. Follow your heart. Get a job that you enjoy. That's stupid because you're going to get a job and it's not going to satisfy. You're going to be upset. You're going to be like, oh, no, and then you're just going to gripe about your job, get another job, gripe about it, get another job. It just will be a destructive circle. Don't, don't do that. Instead, give meaning to what you do. Even a boring job can have it can be meaningful. It's more about your motivation, your heart, and doing the thing. Do a job that is meaningful, not that you get a job that really is necessarily the job, but you give meaning to that job. Um, your job is an, is an opportunity to impact others, to fund missions, to give you experience, to teach you perseverance. Your job can have many different benefits. And... Uh, None of these will be found if you just go around trying to find what makes you happy at any given time because that will change. Um, you'll do something for a number of years and you'll be like, I just don't really like doing this anymore. So what are you going to do? You're just going to, come on, kids, get in the car. We're moving. <laughs> okay, I mean, you could. Um, who you are is more important than what you do. I literally just talked about this my entire 
series on, that I finished up last Sunday on Sunday nights. I, it was called What Can I Do? It was a, a four-part sermon series, and that was pretty much the whole big idea. If I could summarize it in any one thing, who you are is more important than what you do. Um, so that uh, you're just gonna have to ignore this stupid formatting. Just I'll just do this, and then we can just pretend like it. It'll just go away, okay? Um, so who should I marry? You know, everybody has this idea like Disney, right? The, the, there's that one person. If you miss that opportunity, you're screwed for the rest of your life. No, no, no. So um, the Bible does give us some pointers to what kind of a person to marry, though. Obviously, there are the exceptions where God can give you a specific thing like, hey, you need to marry this person. But keep in mind that sometimes you think you hear from God when it's not really God. I actually, this happened at, at college a lot. God told me that you're the one. And then they'd be like, I don't know you. I don't know you. And no, you know, so there's that kind of, you know, oh, God, like like uh, Chuck was telling me this some story about uh, God told me you're going to have my babies and stuff. And it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, this... Can we just clarify, I didn't tell people that? No, 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 no. A story. <laughs> he told me a story. Yes, absolutely. Somebody's going to be <laughs> listening to this. Listening. Right. Like 12 years after the fact, they went, this Chuck is a strange fella. <laughs> Anyways, um, so number one, uh, marry someone who's a Christian. I mean, obviously, unless you're not a Christian, then it really doesn't matter too much. <laughs> the Bible talks about being equally yoked. Um, don't expect to find a super Christian if you're not living your whole heart for God. You know what I mean? Sometimes we want to live a minimal, nominal Christian life, and then we want God to give us, like, a Paul. And it's like, ah, yeah. God's not going to say, hey, super righteous person, get with the super sinful person. Like, you see what I'm saying. Obviously, I'm talking in human terms, but you get what I'm saying. Um, don't expect someone more than more spiritual than you are, and don't expect that they'll change. When you, when you set your eyes on someone to marry them, and, and you know, obviously, hopefully— it's reciprocated. <laughs> Y'all are, you know, uh, hopefully. Uh, don't expect that they'll change. Who you marry is who they're going to be. What people do is they think, I'm going to be able to change them. Or, um, you know, oh, they'll change for me. Or, or, or you know, ah, I'll, we'll work it out later. <laughs> you, you better work it out now. Um, th those things, those little things will get to be big things. And those little things that irritate you about them... The longer time is there and the more you wake up with them without the makeup on, you've already had sex with them, the, 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 the miracle of the relationship is over, it, it starts to be really glaring and it's like, well, you, you really need to think about it before you make the commitment, not after. Um, another thing to question is, is marriage right for you? Sometimes people are lonely. And they're not really marriage material. They're not really willing to bend for the other person. They want to always be right. They want to win every argument, but they're lonely. And so they think that a marriage will somehow fix that. Marriage doesn't make you unlonely. It's like pornography. People think, I'm going to get married and then I won't have a problem with pornography. That, that's not how it works. Who you are before the marriage is exactly who you are after the marriage. So you have to stop and ask yourself, is marriage right for me? It's not right for everybody. That's okay. You don't have to get married. It's not like it's going to make you more worthy of a person. Um, do you have opportunity? <laughs> This is a really good question because if you don't have opportunity to get married, don't worry about who am I going to marry to. You know what I mean? Sometimes we get all worked up like, oh, well, I, I'm getting older. My ovaries will dry up or, you know, my, my sperm or whatever. And it's like, well, y you know, if marriage presents itself, worry about it then. But if it doesn't, don't worry about it. Um, don't worry about the future. Absolutely. So, uh, the next thing. If you are considering someone for marriage, is their character good? Now, this is why it's important to not get in serious relationships and, and have sex with people that you don't know overly well. I would actually say it's very obvious in the Bible that sex is really for marriage, and there's a good reason for that, a lot of good reasons for that. But um, with that being said, is their character good? How do they treat – watch these things. How do they treat waiters and waitresses? That will kind of show you. What's their relationship with their parents? That'll That's a big red flag right there. Um, if they are a man, look at their father. If they're a woman, look at their mother. That will give you a general idea of how they will be in the future. Now, you might say, now hold on, I'm a lot different than my mom. Okay, let me clarify. The character will be very much the same. The actions might differ, but it will come from the same character. You see what I'm saying? It, parents just have a way of, of giving their kids a certain part of their inner self. And although the kids and the parents might do entirely different things, 
you'll you'll notice that there'll be a lot of those th same things. An insecure father is more likely to have an insecure son. You see what I mean? Th those kinds of things, and it it's definitely worth thinking about. Um, so, is their character good? Well, I really like them. Basically, what that means if it's a girl, they smiled at me. If it's a boy, what that means is, I mean, they're really hot. So, I mean, that's often oh, I really like them. It's like, well. Put aside your 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 your. Here's the thing: falling in love is really easy. Feelings come and go, and uh, you really have to watch out that your feelings don't just kind of take you captive and use your brain. You know what I mean? I, I know that marriage is a lot about feelings, but hopefully it's not all about the feelings. Um, look at their parents and see who they'll be. Um, not always in action, but an attitude. Absolutely. Read the book of Proverbs. And I, I heard um, uh, Dr. Phil, I believe was what it was, where he where the guy was looking for a, a Proverbs 31 wife. I want to – you, you – so. was it Dr. Phil? I, I think it was. Anyways, and the thing is, is people kind of take that out of context. There's 30 chapters talking about who you need to be. And then there's one chapter talking about who the person you need to find. So I think that maybe that should be taken into account. Be a good person rather than expecting God to just plop this good person. You know what I mean? It's just worth thinking about. Um, read Proverbs you know, and then see if somebody is a wise person or a foolish person. Somebody can be really, really attractive but foolish. And remember, if you marry that fool, you're going to be stuck with a fool, and then you're going to have to learn how to deal with them and how to uh, make peace with them. So that's something you're going to have to think about. Anyways, um, remember that all feelings fade. Every single feeling fades. There's going to be sometimes when you hate each other, and you need to be committed to the idea past those feelings. So commitment has to go beyond what you feel. Um, and then obviously a relationship will not make you happy. If you are not happy before you're in a relationship, you need to solve that problem before you get in a relationship because it will just work its way into that relationship and, and cause a lot of good memories to be bad memories. Again with this. Okay, so what job should you get? We're looking at all the different areas of life. You know, how, how, how am I going to do this? So we've looked at, you know, the idea of living with purpose. We've looked at uh, a relationship. Now let's look at the idea of a job. Um, when you are trying to figure out what should you do with your life, don't worry about the big picture. Don't worry about having everything planned out from start to finish. Your plans will go to, to crap anyways. I mean it's just something that no matter how much you really work it and have this perfect little – it's it's not going to work how you think it is anyway. So don't get all worked up about it. Instead, do this. What are you able to do? Um, you know, start there. I started out uh, working construction because my dad owned a construction company. Then I went and stocked bread for Sarah Lee Bread Company. I um, worked as a groundskeeper for a while. Um, I worked as a uh, study. Uh, I forget what they're called. Uh, sure, um, for a for a professor, um, and then I. Had to leave college, which was not planned, but I just ran out of money. So I moved back over here, and um, I just kind of felt good about moving down here, even though I really didn't like this area at the time. And then um, we were able to find a job as uh, answering phone calls for a medical company. And then we went from there. Um, I started doing uh, worship at the church um, in a slightly paid position. And then they moved me into like a full-time position uh, later, but see what I mean? That was just something that I was able to do at the time. You can't you can't be concerned about rainbows and unicorns all the time. You have bills to pay, and you need to get a job to pay those bills. And you can't be concerned about having the perfect job. Well, I don't want to get stuck in a dead end job. So who cares if you do? The job shouldn't give you life satisfaction. You shouldn't build your whole happiness off of a job. What happens if you get fired? What happens if it turns out that it's not the job that you thought it was? What happens if you have to move? I mean there's just so many different questions to ask. What are you able to do? Having asked that, you go to the next one. What do you have opportunity to do? Let's say I'm able to do physical labor and like a lawn maintenance, but what I lack is opportunity. Nobody needs lawn maintenance done. See what I mean? So find a job that you are able to do and then one that you have opportunity to do. Ecclesiastes talks about cast your bread on many waters. Take chances and try different things. You don't have to have it all figured. And this is one of the things I hate about people going to college. 
you have to go from high school to knowing exactly what you want to do in, with your life and then getting a degree to get it. What if you change your mind in the next four years and you get a degree about something you don't even care about anymore? See what I mean? Like, ah, I'm a big believer in if you want to go to college, wait three or four years after high school and then see if you still feel the same. As it turns out, my college degree, I didn't even need it. So I wasted four years, basically. I might need it in the future. But I enjoyed it, and I, I got to learn something. But, I mean, lots of things in life are fun. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I should pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for a university degree. Uh, anyways, so try different things. Um, have fallbacks. and I can't emphasize this enough. Like people who go into ministry, I'm going to be a pastor. Okay, well, what happens if that fails? Well, God will be with me. I'm not saying he won't be with you, but what if your plan of being a pastor fails? Have a fallback. You need to be equipped to do more than just one thing. Like you see these YouTubers um, nowadays, they have, they've, their only career that they've ever had is making YouTube videos. Well, obviously, YouTube stardom being what it is, it's fickle. You're going to not be popular in another four years. What are you going to do when you're no longer popular on YouTube? See what I mean? You can always try and chase it and try to get popular again, or you can realize that maybe you should try different things instead of just – it's just a good – just good advice there. Do with it what you will. Um, don't set your heart on one thing. Don't be so over-focused on this is my goal. I'm climbing the ladder of success that you forget about life. You forget about enjoying life. I mean, there's plenty of life all around you. Slow down. Just enjoy it. When I was a kid, I thought that I had to do everything yesterday. You know, so I hurried up and got married. Hurry up and have kids. Hurry up and do, do, do. It's like, well, what happens is you get in this idea that I need to go somewhere else and do something else for, for, for happiness and, and to get success. Calm down. Just take a breath and slow down a little bit. Enjoy where you are. And you can still work towards something. Have goals. Those are great things. But... There's more to life than that. Have side projects and hobbies like learn how to play an instrument. Uh, Chuck does this thing where he um, where he writes music now, and then he ha he also has his his normal YouTube uh, thing with with the website and all that. He writes blogs, but then he also does the, does the work at church. Then he also does uh, the books at church. See what I mean? He has all these different things that he that he does. See what I mean? Like it, if anything changes in his future, he's okay. He'll probably just be able to shift with it because. He knows how to do more than just one thing. Have side projects and hobbies. Learn how to do more than just one thing. Um, for some people, writing books has seemed something like, some, like something that they really want to do. So have your job and write books on the side. What people do is they do this. I want to do this, this job. I want to do this endeavor, so I'm going to quit my job to do that. Big mistake. You don't want to cancel your income to, in the hopes of more income in the future. Work on that. Do that. That's great. You're going to have to rework your schedule. You, you, if you're going to try something on the side, you're going to have to change your schedule around. But you know, but then still have that thing to keep you tied down. Where are your talents? If you are mus musically minded, for instance, you probably shouldn't get a job as a as a as a bookkeeper. That's just that's just kind of a a basic thing. Uh, skills in math aren't really exactly uh, skills in music. <laughs> know where your talents are. Um, so where are your talents? Where are your passions? Um, now, when I say passions, I'm not talking about things like uh, things that you enjoy. I enjoy reading books. I enjoy watching TV. I enjoy going for walks. I enjoy riding my bike. I enjoy playing video games. There's a lot of things I enjoy, but I'm talking about passions, not things that you enjoy. Passions, things that you can't not do. You know what I mean? For some people, it's writing. For some people, it's, I mean, they just love the idea of knowledge and teaching and study and that kind of stuff. For some people, see what I mean? Find where your passion is, not things that you enjoy, your passion. Um, are you learning valuable tasks? Is there a market for the job that you're, that you're trying to work towards? Sometimes people go to college, for instance, and they study for a job that doesn't even exist in our job market. Were you going to say something? When I was first looking at, you know, going back to school, I was going to go to culinary school. And I talked to one of the advisors, and they're like, only about 10% of people that graduate from culinary school even get a job within five years afterwards. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that's what a lot of people work towards, though. Well, I want to, they just keep yeah. wanting to move towards something that's pointless. Yeah, and, and there that brings up another point, which I think I'll throw in here, too, since, since you brought it up, a really good point, which, thank you for, for that. that. That's great. Adding on to what Nicole said, sometimes it, it helps if you have a way to get your foot in the door. Okay, like let me give you an example. Going to culinary school at the same time that you know somebody in, who has a restaurant, for instance, that can get your foot in the door, 
See what I mean? Versus going in blind, not knowing anybody. Believe it or not, but playing politics is a huge part of life. If you go into something as a new kid, it's not going to work. For instance, my brother just bought an MMA uh, gym. And if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like wrestling, sort of. And there's different kinds of MMA gyms. There's like the more family one, and then there's like the basically the big leagues. And if you start out at the big leagues, they'll pretty much everybody will just gang up on you and just beat the crap out of you. It's more like boxing, though. It, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter. Whereas if you start out at the family one, they even tell you this: start at the family level and then take it to the uh, to to the to the big league one, because then you won't be quite the new guy. You know what I mean? And the same basic concept is there either way. Get your foot in the door before you um, stake everything on it. Um, passion is not something is not is not something I already said this is not something you enjoy like video games I love playing video games it's something you can't not do you know what I mean it's something it's something that, that you live and breathe for I cannot live the rest of my life without pouring into kids I can't so what did I do I took two in and I plan to take more in, in the future when we're able to I mean obviously we can't right now we're kind of tapped out you know <laughs> having having two in diapers and and then oh my goodness no just just no <laughs> five is enough for now in a couple years we'll, we'll we'll talk about it but anyways um it's something you can't not do um so a good way to find out a, a, where you should start is what do people praise you for do they say wow you're really good at organizing do they say wow you're really good at cooking do they say wow you're really good at building stuff what is it that you do in life that people give you compliments for that might be the window into what your talents are now I'm not saying you should follow praise that's not what I'm saying what I am saying is that sometimes our talents are hidden from us and they're right in front of our face so find things that you're good at like for instance I when I was a kid oh god you know uh, show me your will and all this I was good at music people always said hey you're good at music use that <laughs> see what I mean like stop looking for something over there over the rainbow um, so live with purpose. Whatever job you have, do it with purpose. We just talked about this. Purpose is the way you do things and the motivation of your heart, not what you do. Life really doesn't matter overly much about – let me say that differently. It makes it sound like it doesn't matter what you do. It, sure, the, the choices you make matter and those kinds of things. And I'm not saying anything about that, but in life, the big deal that you're going to find a lot of the way is it's the way you do things rather than the things you're specifically doing. You can, for instance, be a pastor and say, oh, or a social worker or something like that and say, well, I'm doing good for people and just have a crappy, sucky attitude. And Paul even talked about this. Hey, you know, you, you know, you're giving these prophecies and everything, but you're doing it without love, and it's pointless. It's nothing. It's nothing. See what I mean? And so it really comes back to that. Dial it in on, on, on your character, you know, and kind of work from there. Oh, okay. So here's just some basic advice that we'll that we'll look at. First off, don't revolve life around fun. Then some things you do in life are going to be fun. Some things that you do in life are not going to be fun. Don't revolve your whole world around fun. It's going to be an experience to have. That's great, but plan for the future. Um, plan for you know not necessarily the end of your life. Don't look that far into the future. But I mean. You know, where do you want to be in five years and ten years and fifteen years? Now that that probably isn't going to happen, but still have goals that you work towards. Do the best you can do. In anything that you do in life, try to do the best that you can do. Don't worry about being the best at everything. Worry about doing the best that you can do. Um, you will never be happy by trying to be happy. Some people have, make it their life, their purpose in life. I want to be happy, and so they they seek after it. And they they want to be content like they used to be in their golden years. Like maybe when you were in college, you're really happy. Maybe when you're in high school, you're really happy. Maybe when, whatever. We all have those golden years for each of us, and we want to go back to the feeling that we had there. But we forget all the unpleasantness that we had there first off, and then second off, the more you try to be happy, the less happy you're going to be. So happiness is not. As, I'm sorry. Happiness is a result, not a goal. It's not a goal post that you're reaching for it's a result of the way that you're living so yeah, kind of don't get those two confused learn to be content with what you have getting more will never satisfy for long sometimes we think i have to get this i have to get this to be happy i have to get you know this whole series of vinland saga so i can find out what the crap is going to happen to thorfinn <laughs> no, nothing okay I, I might be projecting but just shut your mouth anyways <laughs> and instead um uh, instead of that, learn to be content with what you have, with where you have, 
Life is basically one big pursuit of trying to get the next big thing. You know, we get married and it's not good enough. Or she's not as pretty as she used to be, or she gained a little bit of weight, or whatever. So now we have to tra trade her in for the newer model, you know what I mean? And always trying, thinking that if we get more and something bigger, that somehow we'll be happier. And then we get it, and then we're not. You know, that affair costs way more than you thought it was going to be. Uh, not just finances, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, emotional instability, family breakup, all kinds of different things. You know, you thought, oh, I'm going to be happy with this, and it, you weren't. You get a new car, and it has, start, has, starts having problems, and you start realizing, oh, it's just a car. And then you buy a house, and you're like, man, this is the perfect house. I had to have this house. I couldn't live without this house. And then things start to go wrong, and it's not like you, you, there are little things that you didn't really notice, and yeah, things like that. Um, so learn to be, to be content with what you have. Um, you don't need it. A lot of people go to purchases like this. I need this. You, know, you, you don't need it. You really want it. You need to distinguish between wants and needs. Don't get a job you enjoy. Enjoy your job. That's one of the biggest words of advice I could give, I'm could i going to give to my kids when they're a little bit older. Don't chase down jobs that you enjoy. Enjoy your job. It's about your outlook. It's about how you go to it. Um, feelings come and go. Learn to love your spouse. Yes, absolutely. Despair and pain doesn't destroy your purpose. Sometimes you're going to think, I've messed up too much. This situation is too tragic. Um, this person hurt me too bad. I can never bounce back from this. But what you need to know is that your despair, your, your pain does not destroy your purpose. Um, it's going to be something where, where just because something bad happened to you doesn't mean that your whole life is shot. You have to deal with that thing. You have to move on. You have to forgive. But you can still have purpose. Um, but uh, with all these things I'm talking about, we talked about getting a job and all these different things. Remember that what you do in life isn't who you are. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, being a pastor or an artist, th that's not who you are. It's what you do. There is still something deep, deeper inside of you that is who you are. And you might say, well, that's kind of picking, you know, splitting hairs. Well, well not really. You're going to give your life to a job, and you're going to think that this really matters. It's going to make me happy. You're going to work your brains out. You're going to be like, this this is making a big difference. I'm, I'm doing something. My life means something. I have finally earned purpose. I have finally earned worth. I'm no more that little screw-up that I was when I was a kid. And then you're going to come to a point of just complete exhaustion. And you're going to think, I'm not good at this thing. I am a waste. Because you've attached your entire purpose as a person to the thing that you're doing. You are more than the thing that you do. And uh, so you have to learn to adapt in life. You have to learn how to roll with the punches because a lot of life will be a swift punch in the jaw. You have to learn how to not pass out when you're punched in the jaw. <laughs> um, so that's the end of this, I believe. Let me make sure I didn't skip anything with this stupid nonsense thing that it's doing. Looks like I did not. Any questions about any of this? Oh, yes. I, right there. Go back. Oh, sorry. Um, no, to the job one. Um, yep. You were saying that find your, your passion to do, mm -hmm. but then you were saying how um, your talents, uh, look for your talents to do. What if your passions are different from your talents? That's where creativity comes in. Uh -huh. Like, here's, let me, let me try and give you a hypothetical here, okay? Let's say... I'm really talented at playing guitar, but let's say I hate music. I I probably not really going to be playing the guitar if I don't really like it. So I mean, talents are things where it, expressions of your passions that come out in skill. You see what I mean? And so oftentimes you'll kind of gravitate to things, and it'll be things that you do really good naturally. And very rarely will you be in a place where a talent will kind of just contradict full-heartedly a passion. You know what I mean? That That's usually not going to happen in life. Usually, if it does, it's because you're looking at it in the wrong lens. Like, for instance, um, I think that I hate music, but all I do is hate rap. And I and I play the guitar really good. Do you know what I mean? Well, just look at it differently. Maybe you just don't like playing in a uh, pub. Maybe you don't like... Rap, maybe, see what I mean? <coughs> Try different things and see what you, do you, you kind of get what I'm saying? But with that being said, it looks like you have something specific on your mind, so maybe you should just say what's on your mind so I can actually well, answer the... Well, take me first. Okay. 
I, I, I really, I, I really like cooking and stuff, mm-hmm. but I would never want to work in a restaurant. I, I would hate being on my feet all day cooking all day. It seems right. like it would be like the worst thing in the world to do. Okay. So what, what, using that as an example, how, how would that fit the whole town thing? Well, it's a little bit of a moot point because you don't really need a job. <laughs> But, I mean, let's say that you did need a job. Um, it's not... You have a passion for cooking. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking more what to do with my life, not so much as a job. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. Your job is not what you do with your life. Those are two different set things. A job is something that you do to get income. Right. Okay. So you, Gracie, have a passion for cooking, and that has come out in your talent... You cook, and you cook well. See what I mean? Your talent has aligned itself with your passion. Sometimes you have to do something that you don't really want to do. Like, I really enjoy playing guitar. I don't really want it to be my means of income, but okay. See what I mean? Because it's your job is not what's going to fulfill you in life. Your job is how you get your paycheck. So now that you've got your paycheck, now you can in- use that paycheck to worry about the worry about an endeavor that you actually want to do. See what I mean? Yeah. And that you kind of have to separate the two because, once again, everything that you're hearing nowadays on, on in books and everything it goes something like this. Do what makes you happy. It's a complete fantasy world. It's not going to work like that. It, you will never enjoy doing – anybody, you will never enjoy doing your passion all the time. Did you know that there's sometimes when I think, why did we ever have kids? Because they just drive me crazy sometimes. See what I mean? You will never enjoy your passion 24-7. But a talent is something that you are good at regardless of whether or whether or not you enjoy it. So, for instance, well, like, for instance, the cooking thing. See what I mean? So now let's say, okay, so your passion and your talent is both for cooking. But you want to do something else. Pursue hobbies. See what I mean? Um, don't make your whole life revolve around your job. Your job is a paycheck. It's not your existence. Yeah. And once you can separate those two, you're a lot better off. Does that answer the question or no? Yeah, it does. Okay. Because if it doesn't, I mean, I can try saying it in a different way or something. Or, yeah. Okay. So it did answer the question. You're not just saying that? No, I think, it, yeah, I, I understand it more. Okay. Any other questions? That was a really good question, by the way. Because sometimes I say things and it's not... I could have said it in a clearer way, and I think that your question helped it to kind of illuminate itself. Any other questions? Comments? I don't have any questions. So we're good to stop?